get. Who's he get? The following started as a let's play, but quickly turned into a critical analysis of revision. A free mod for Deus Ex available on Steam and only Steam thanks to a deal with Square Enix. Since the mod is free, there's no concerns about value for money, but rather for it saying a spectacularly bad example in terms of aesthetics, game design, and general everything. So, now we're up to the first visit to Hell's Kitchen, and I'm going to warn you right now. This map is a total and complete clusterfuck. Oh, wait, clusterfuck makes it sound fun. This map is a total and complete plate of my dad's cooking. This particular video is most of Hell's Kitchen before I go into the sewers to hunt the Majestic 12 and still has HD, DP and New Vision on because I got the footage in the same session as the last video I, before I managed to switch them off for good. But first, as a primer, let's talk about what was great about this map in vanilla form and how it was the first map that really pushed the emergent game narrative that pushes the whole choices aspect that Deus Ex is famous for and has encouraged in game design throughout everything. Okay, so suppose you're going to give the player an area to play in and look around and explore while they work towards some overall goal. You have to make sure that the player will or at least can stay engaged with the whole time and not just feel like they're wasting their time walking around in some sort of decorative but pointless area that someone designed for their own amusement. How do you do that? Well, you could set up your sandbox so that the player always had a steady stream of quests available, sometimes getting them from even just overhearing a conversation or walking past the thing. I hear Fallout 4 is doing something like that. Thanks to some bad genes that Fallout 4 inherited from Skyrim. You can't opt out of these, or any quest you even hear mention of. If someone's about to ask you to do something you don't got time to do, then turn around and run the hell away! Or you could cover their map with all these missions and side quests and extra events and just areas of interest so that anywhere they go there's something there happening and there's pretty much no dead space on the map which you know some people do even when they've got the benefit of cybernetic dinosaurs which I personally thought would be enough for almost any game you could set it up so it's basically a consequence free environment full of victims and collectibles and stuff you can blow up so that the player can either go rampaging or grind towards increasingly convoluted 100% completion. A new one that some studios have been experimenting with is to set it up so that the whole area is full of bits of entertainment, conversations to overhear and things to see so that the player can just stop and enjoy the atmosphere whenever they feel like it. This wasn't really viable back in 2000 and isn't really viable now without a big AAA budget. DSX took a different approach. It treated you like a grown up with a big job to do. It recognized that you didn't know exactly how to do it, so it figured you would do what grown ups do. You would go look for more information, ask people questions, get distracted, get sidetracked, work out that you were in over your head and try to prepare yourself as best you could. Try to help people, maybe anyway. While it was possible that a player could somehow ignore all the other leads and end up going down the quickest path, they were from the moment they set foot outside the subway presented with a whole assortment of plot hooks that allowed them to set their own priorities and decide whether or not they wanted to follow up on things. It gave you opportunities, sometimes they were easily available and sometimes they required an investment of time, effort and or things like lock picks or multi-tools. This pushes the choice element because Warren Spector is a big believer that it's not the choice that matters as much as the consequences. This is a complicated topic that probably warrants a whole series of episodes on its own, so we're just going to gloss over it for now. 
But in this case, there's all kinds of choices you find yourself making. Whether you choose to use a lockpick to gain access to something, or whether you choose to keep that lockpick and employ another solution, or just pass up on that opportunity. Admittedly, this is harder to do in the era of superbly rendered graphics, simply because it makes it harder to create a visual language without ruining the immersion, but some games like Left 4 Dead still manage it. However, while padding the living shit out of this map, Caustic Creative have cluttered it with fool's gold and ruined a player's prospecting chances. Now the visual language is destroyed and replaced with a curse of a thousand frustrations for the player who seeks opportunity or even just vaguely pays attention. So what do I mean by fool's gold? I mean that large parts of the additions look like beautiful shiny opportunities for you to invest your time and resources in and only then do you find out that the return on your investment is absolutely nothing. Or worse, sometimes you're trapped and need to reload, or just get the feeling that the developer is laughing at you. The more levels consist of elements that are outside the player's ability to influence or be influenced by, the clearer your design has to be about which is which, uh, especially if you plan to subvert expectations later on. Deus Ex had a pretty clear visual language and used pretty basic but effective tricks to make you feel like you were just moving through to look for another opportunity. With the new map you basically want to quick save before you attempt to go check out anything because there's a good chance that you need to use resources to get somewhere and that once you get there you're going to be rewarded with absolutely nothing. And that's not nice. These nuggets of fool's gold come in four basic varieties. Treasure teasers. When it looks like there's something cool that you can grab, and it's actually just there for decoration and it you up resources. You have way more stuff than that. Don't... Why does he have all this stuff out in the open? He's an arms dealer, not a grocer. What is his plan? He sells me stuff, then he goes around and then he asks me to leave the room so they can go into the storage room, pick it up, come out. Soy food and cigarettes are on his... Why can't I buy any of that stuff? stupidest part about this is there's actually like a top here which again I only know about this because I read about it on forums and didn't invest the time myself but yeah people have actually tried to scale that just so that they can get through and get those upgrades because in Deus Ex these upgrades are seriously seriously worth the effort um, Especially if you're going to play it on realism or super hard modes like a lot of the mod fans are going to. And yeah, they've just been uh, ruthlessly mocked by the invisible barrier and the levitating garbage bag. Untied plot hooks, where it looks like there's a story. Maybe a story you can get involved in, but it's really just a collection of junk. Happened here, like... What? I don't get... Okay, so I'm guessing what happened here is on the other side of this unbreakable mesh wire some cops were doing an arms deal with some NSF guys And then just bullets started flying around out of guns for no reason. Um, and they all died. The, the bullets probably started flying for whatever reason that that garbage bag is just levitating above the garbage cans. Used to be one room, 
Now there's like three. Okay. Trying to catch my breath. Oh. Okay, wow, this... Wow, that was exciting. That was totally worth all the effort and rendering and getting someone to explore. It's a... It's a hotel room that demos an issue with the light physics. You saved my life! Someone who keeps... And a flare. Let's break into someone's bedroom. Maybe they're having sex. Or... Is that a virus home? Seriously? Hello? Wait, that, this is exactly the same place as before. Oh, this is the junkie apartment. they clearly stole rooms from <laughs> in order to pad up the other apartments. Goddamn Liberty Island in here. Ah. That is not fire code compliant. If I was that tenant, I would complain. <laughs> sniper rifle. What is it with this mod and putting in extra sniper rifles? Like, who, why is this here? Who left their sniper rifle out here and what were they planning to aim at? The empty street? The ads? Other ads? The garbage. Sign. Velvet Ivy. Why is this here other than... I think this is here because someone wasted hours building this extra rooftop area and decided they had to have something of value on it just to justify the development time. Bar, ammo, gun, <laughs> skulls. So far, this is this apartment is way more interesting. Yeah, it's nothing to do with you know the core experience or visceral or anything like that, but it generates way more interest than anything else they put in there. Honeypots where it looks like there'll be something really cool and awesome.
And there's nothing. Why do some of these buildings have interiors and some of them just have pasted stuff? Okay, now if I hadn't been watching the discussion and knew that there was literally no point to these, I could waste an hour trying to work out the best way to get up there to push that button to see what happens when those doors don't open. Seriously, look at that. Why would you set that up if you can't use stuff there? That's a waste of resources and a waste of players' time and an insult to anyone who takes the time to do it. Hell. <sighs> Another area that would probably be cool to access and have cool stuff. But it is apparently just there to highlight how fake and painted on the rest of the scenery looks. <laughs> Yeah, that was totally worth all the effort that it took to render that. Um, passing over briefly why someone in Hell's Kitchen has a building that looks a bit like a medieval castle. Bad directions. Where the design either leads you away from important locations. Okay, why would you have... Direct, want people to go to the Ton Hotel, which is over there and put a giant sign that says hotel over there or completely contradicts actual directions given in the game this one gives me the impression that nobody on caustic creative actually likes playing deus ex and in fact hadn't played it in a while because they somehow managed to forget every bit of dialogue in the whole hell's kitchen area for the entire eight year production period. No, they did, seriously. That that there's a post on the forum about this. And I don't know how you could have fucked up this bad if you played the game or even playtested the mod as you were playing it. Well, as you were making it. Okay, so remember how Smuggler's Place used to be right next to the subway and you just used to be able to wander in? And usually what happened is you'd wander over to it and find it the first time and he'd ask you for a password and you didn't have the password so you had to go around and ask people for info. Earlier you said something about the smuggler. <laughs> Tough guy like you? Figured you'd be a big customer. He's got a basement place over near the subway entrance. You have to give him the password bloodshot or he won't let you in. So now let's go find smuggler's basement place over by the subway. Head over here, around this corner. Keep going, keep going. Ignore you know, this area that we can't cross because police tape is indestructible. Now, I need augmentation to lift these boxes. So, apparently, 100% of smugglers' customers are nano augmented for strength. Seems a very difficult limitation. And some of them have a strange augmentation I don't have because... After they break these things, they're somehow able to put them back. Now we get down here. Yes. Password? Bloodshot. And now we can use our password. <laughs> mm. 
So, on that trip to a smuggler's place, you may have noticed something a little odd. There an added element that I can't call fool's gold because it's only shiny if you specifically think that fighting and or killing black people adds to any game. These are two new NPCs that are labelled criminal and attack you on sight. For literally no reason. Whoa! That's right, man. Step up. Uh, you might have noticed, yeah, it was armed, but they don't care. They just attack you on site. They never have any name other than criminal, and they have no other dialogue other than their combat sound bites. In case you're one of those people from the forum who wants to assure me I'm the only one who thinks this is a problem, no, I'm really not the only one who thinks this is a problem. Movies might have to worry about the power dynamic in narrative, but games have to be concerned with the power imbalance in both narrative and mechanics, particularly when it comes to white player characters facing off against NPCs of color. And that means game designers need to think about everything from the skin color of the enemies on the other end of the barrel to using stereotypes as a crutch for character design. Let's start with enemy design and how people of color are often framed as the villains. So, in this case, Caustic Creative leaned heavily on the black thug stereotype to create random villains who are basically here to be target practice. They can't be spoken with, they don't add any story, they just attack you on sight. And Caustic Creative have put a really disproportionately high amount of work into this. They initially struck me as a new model, but later what I worked out what they did was they combined the model which you initially meet as a pimp, and then is later recycled for a gang leader, and the model of a high-ranking Illuminati operative, Toby Antway, so they could create a black pimp slash gang member to attack you on the streets for no reason even though the dialogue in Hell's Kitchen says that this doesn't happen in Hell's Kitchen. No seriously it does, listen. That was uncalled for. You mug people great, you need the dough, but you show some respect. I tried to raise this concern with Caustic Creative on the Steam forum. It went completely ignored by the official staff of Caustic Creative, and then I got this charming post um, telling me that it would not be an issue and I was just imagining this as a problem or searching for problems where there were none. This is particularly troubling since this moderator appears to be the one actually doing all the data entry for their post-release QA process. So if Hawkbird says that it's not a problem, it's not going to get entered as a problem and no one is going to try to fix it. Even though it was made at the end of the greedy 90s where everyone was trying to out horrible each other, the original Deus Ex game was actually pretty good for dealing with matters of representation and avoiding using stereotypes as a crutch. All the black characters in it are treated with the same level of respect and depth as everyone else. In fact, there seems to be quite a conscientious effort to avoid including negative stereotypes in this game. Until Caustic Creative got a hold of it. I'm really starting to think that nobody at Caustic Creative actually likes Deus Ex. The whole area of Hell's Kitchen itself seems to have been randomly reinvented. Um, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason behind anything. It's just basically like they started throwing stuff at the map because they had a cool idea and nobody stopped to think about whether it actually fitted in or what it had to do with anything. And what the fuck happened in Hell's Kitchen? It used to be a shithole. Zero Ghost the video game? Or Kasara style? Disaster risk management person? Wait. Page Industries? Why is the Page Industries business in this shitty neighborhood? Is that for the Matrix or men's rights? I, I give up trying to sort it out. Marketing? Advertising? 
Holy shit! Daredevil has lost. Kingpin has taken over and completely gentrified Hell's Kitchen. People in Hell's Kitchen are now so rich they just throw their money out rather than carry it. Still got garbage, still got trashed cars with the original crappy models so they stand out like dog's balls. Ah, Page Industries. Again, I don't know why he has a central building in this place since it clearly is a shithole. Just apparently nobody buying advertising here. NAS can kill you. Pre-call, can't see the number. Very helpful. Lily's Lounge. That looks like a fun place. Looks like a strip bar. And of course there's just the usual array of bad design choices that make this look like baby's first mod and seriously make me wonder if anybody even bothered trying to play through the mod before releasing it. Where's well, there like an access booth? It's like a paper booth. But nothing in here. I don't get it. Why is there a shootout going on here? Why is it involving high explosives? I'm gonna hide down here with you. You got the right idea. Why did the? Why is there a lamb in the payphone? I don't get it. Someone came in, ritually sacrificed this guy, then threw money on the ground, then threw candy bars around. How is this adding to the visceral core experience? Don't know who the hell the criminals are anymore. I'm not sure what I like more. The fact that whoever murdered that guy apparently took the time to lock up after they left. Or well, the fact that this guy runs a candy shop and apparently keeps his trash, which has flies billowing around it, right outside his front door to deter customers. I don't understand any of it. Sir, did, did, did you see that cat run through the wall? Sir? Sir? Okay, so the NSF is running a gun, shooting up the streets. We're supposed to have cleared off the streets. Absolutely nobody has gotten off the fucking streets. And we've got a SWAT van and cops deployed because some asshole crashed his car into a wall. Presumably because he was staring at the... really bad cigarette ad that's <coughs> I love that we have this guy here who seems to have crashed into a barrier which presumably was erected to stop him crashing into that car accident over there and that he somehow managed to bypass all those barriers to get to it what are physics? Who thought that was a good idea? Why? Who thought that was clever? Okay, so that poster you guys left in. Vending Why the fuck does a liquor store have two mini gun turrets guarding it? Why? Why the thing? All this wooden work up here, why is this here? Oh. What I'm telling you, girl? Why the f 
fuck has everything got infinite strength in this? And if you go underground, he's got laser trip wires, drone guns, military type stuff, plus their guards on the roof. How's that impressive? I'll handle Jojo. Here have you get home guns. so your father won't have to worry. I can take. Okay, dead bodies aside. Is this a basketball court purely just for practicing slam dunking while people sit down and watch and you have a street light just to make sure that it never gets too dark? Let's go check out the elevator. Why is there a lamp set up in the elevator? Why is there a laser trip wire in the elevator? How long have these guys been on? Is this so the hotel guy gets an alarm tripping every time that someone steps out of his elevator? Or, in this case, steps through and falls down the elevator shaft? Or have these guys been <laughs> holding this place, you know, long enough that they've called in <laughs> a contractor to install a security system? thing those guys didn't know how to like use a terrorist. Thanks for taking care of those guys. How to use a hostage. You from the police? You Natco. Yeah? Well you might be interested. I heard them talking. They said something about it, how they had just put in a generator in a warehouse a few streets south of here. Wait a minute. How tiny is this apartment? I thought I was a goner. It's Thanks. Like, whoever lives in here has th literally like half a room to live in. What is up with the security here? Let's check out the underworld bar. <laughs> I love this fancy wooden hand carved door. Shitty wall. What can I get you? Why you, do you, you must know the area. Why would you think I want that TV area. going in the background? Not exactly. But if it's anywhere, it's probably in the warehouse district. His face is onto the park. I don't know how you get inside. Why did Sounds anyone like think that was a good idea? Be expected. Yeah, this TV doesn't go warble, warble, warble at me. Stealing paintings from you, Nako. An evil channel. Another TV that doesn't go warble warble at me. You the guy that helped Sandra? I think your friend is gonna be alright. Why were we talking about Sandra like she wasn't there? And she's right there! I don't get it. Why are the two girls sitting in front of the Artistic new, artistic nude. Why are you two here? I don't get it. Want to get cigarettes while someone's using this payphone? Fuck you. You just have to stare longingly at them through the glass. Skeletal augmentation. Nanomuscular augmentation. I think I had this. Same chart. On my wall. There's an enemy chat. Oh. The eye augmentation that you. Why is this mirrored? Aside from these guys, just, you know, go gaga for any reflective service. Why is this mirrored? Like, it seems to be that this was originally like some sort of underground parking or storage area and smugglers repurposed it, but why would he add that? <laughs> why is there a beer left in here? What? Why does he have that there? How does he get any customers at all?
Again, why is that there? Why are there buttons that do What's nothing this? everywhere? Why is everybody in Hell's Kitchen just throwing money away? Got five credits for someone who's got the Grey Death. Here you go. God bless you. You know, we're all concerned that I just wandered into your locked apartment. You just asked me if I got five bucks. Well, I did. <sighs> so, what areas could they have uh, improved on? Well, a few, but nothing would have really required them to massively expand the map and bloat it out, so apparently they weren't interested. Sandra Renton's top. Seriously, you guys weren't messing around with models. Someone fix this. This is... <sighs> so this is the exact same original design that never made sense because it turns out that, you know, bathrooms are a low priority for video game designers. So it's just got the two bath, two toilets, and then this, like, trough that looks suspiciously similar to a urinal. Um, and that's it. So this would have been a key area you could revise safely without, you know, breaking anything you could practice on, but yeah, nah, uh, wasn't glamorous enough. Welcome to Tenderloin Clinic. Okay, this is actually the first thing that makes sense, putting her there instead of there. And it's completely ruined by turning the waiting area that never really made sense into some sort of weird artsy hipster thing with the light out. Basically what Hell's Kitchen does is cement that the primary mentality behind this mod was not let's try to revise and improve the original Deus Ex, it was Wee! Let's put stuff on a map! And a lot of that stuff is, it's terrible. Um, pretty much everyone's first mod is we let's put stuff down be, because you're still learning. This is probably a good example of why you shouldn't promote your first mod as a masterpiece. It's not all bad though. So far this cat killing and then coming back and eating rats is the best part about this mod, hands down. I mean that quite sincerely, it's the part I'm most impressed with. <laughs> 